Yeah. Ah. Hi. My name is Eddie. Little Eddie. Hmm. I'm thinking, what's the rest of my name? Hmm. There's Eddie boy. There's Eddie boy. <laughs> okay, so I stop then. And that's how I get ready every morning. <laughs> Ta -da. This is my house. This is 851. Uh, 851 and a half, sorry. My parents is 851. And uh, this is my small apartment slash bedroom. This is also where I've lived for like the past 12 years now, which is kind of a big part of who I am. I spent a lot of time swimming in that pool, playing all sorts of games. And kind of one of the funniest things is, one year I just got so girly that my friend was like, it's really weird when you swim without a top on. <laughs> So, even before coming out as trans, I wasn't allowed to swim topless. Hi, Dad. Hi. <laughs> Lucky. Hey. When I was four or five, I realized that I wasn't a girl. You know, it was supposed to be that I was going to become a father and not a mother, and so. That's kind of where things sort of started. And Eddie's talking about a video Cinderella Castle and the scene where the stepmothers tear off the dress that Cinderella has is wearing. We ain't going to it. No, you're not going to the ball. You're not going to the ball. For the longest time, I kind of had this fantasy that I'd escape to that, like, a fairy godmother would come and you know, turn me into a girl and make everything better. And it was kind of such an escape for me. She came to me one time when she was probably about four years old, crying and saying, uh, uh, Daddy, I want to be a girl. And at the time, I just thought she was going through some kind of a phase. I think she was 10 years old. She said something about, I feel like I'm like a two pe person inside of me, feeling one like a boy, Eddie, and then the other is a girl. When I was explained to myself that I was a boy, it was because God had made me that way, which didn't make a really great relationship as a five-year-old <laughs> between me and God, along with the Mormon culture and how it can be really, really difficult to understand something when it's, it's either not a prevalent or, or it's just hidden. And then when she got to be about 16, she had a girlfriend so he had a girlfriend, and things seemed like they were getting better. She, she was less effeminate in the way she did things, and I thought, okay, it was just a phase, everything's fine. In, in our church, in the LDS church, she was ordained to the priesthood and was the first assistant to the bishop, and so she was you know, very involved. And so I came home one day because she hadn't shown up at church, and she was still in bed, and I came in and I said, hey, what's the deal? And she started crying and she said, um, she said, Dad, let's face it, I'm gay. I came out as gay, but that was sort of my excuse to be myself, which was a woman. So I wore women's clothing, but I told everybody that I was gay. And, you know, I had feminine features, um, even though I was a boy. And a lot of people would think that I was a girl and they would stop me from going into the, the bathrooms. Um, and I was just, I was, you know, loud and proud of being gay. 
and not being very good at being gay. On top of being really conservative, LDS, we also went to a Mormon private school, my sister and I both. So being LDS was our life. It's one of the reasons that, you know, I didn't find out about what being trans was until I was an adult and out of high school. A lot of people, they think you didn't know what gay people were until you were 14 or 15 years old. It's like, where have you lived? Well, I was living in Utah in a Mormon, you know, saturated Mormon community and homeschooled or going to a Mormon private school. So, so you know, there was not an opportunity to learn about, you know, the things that were different or inappropriate. Even before I came out, I always spent tons of time getting ready. My sister was, who was much more just sort of relaxed and, and in herself, wouldn't take as much time getting ready. And my dad had this, like this joke that he would tell, Eddie spends all this time getting ready because Shirley is so beautiful. And normally, you know, you say that with a, a brother and sister involved and it's not a big deal. But to me, I was a boy, but I didn't really feel like a boy. And to hear my dad say that, like, I wasn't as beautiful as my sister was, it was really hard. And I didn't have any confidence in my appearance. Growing up and, and seeing my sister get asked out on dates and taken to the dance to an, a 15 year old, that's important. And like, that was really hard. And I was like, of course, I'm, I'm this ugly boy and my sister's this beautiful girl. So that was really, a really difficult thing for me to deal with. private school, I didn't graduate. Um, I just stopped going when I came out. We sent Eddie to Japan to, to stay with his, his grandparents for about six months. I was watching TV with my grandparents and they had this panel of 100 trans people. My grandma turned to me and was like, oh, this is all about you. And I thought, no, grandma, this is not. I'm, I'm different than that. And then all of a sudden that really hit her and then started to watch what's going on is you really realize it, that that's what she has. It was months later that she came in to me and she said, Dad, I want you to know I, I'm not really gay. Um, I'm, I'm, a, you know, I'm a, a woman that's trapped in a man's body and that's why I thought I was gay. And then she immediately said, but don't worry, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get a sex change operation or anything because I think she was worried about me. One event that was a real turning point was uh, one night I was sitting on the, on the couch and Eddie came walking in and she said, and she sat down on the couch and she had, you know, a really strange look on her face. I had this dream that, and it was a reoccurring dream that I, you know, I chopped off my penis and, you know, I was in a really dark spot, a space and, and not necessarily logical. And her plan was, to perform the operation on herself and we live just across the street from a hospital and she said uh, she said I knew you could get me to the hospital before I died and then I wouldn't have this thing anymore that I hate and she said I started to do the operation and then I realized that I had a serious problem I think they took it more seriously realized they need to take some more serious steps and we got me into counseling and after being diagnosed I was then able to you know, start taking hormones, change my name and all those things, and work towards surgery. で、あの、チェックして、なんかそこにいる、あの、カウンセラーと話しないとダメ。<笑><笑>
多分ね<笑>飛行機に乗ってたらもうちょっとなんかあ楽しみにしてるとか思ってそしてなんか病院にその手術するところに座ってたらやばいやん本気でやるじゃんとか思っちゃう。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>大丈夫、私はもう口に出てるからね。そんな気づかない。We believe that the church leaders are receiving revelation that helps them to be able to better serve in the, in the callings that we're given in the priesthood. We have the、uh, proclamation of the world on the family, which states very clearly that a marriage is between a man and a woman. In my opinion, Eddie's a woman, and so I don't see a problem with that, and I'm, I'm hoping. That the leaders of the church are going to see it that way, and that she'll be able to get married, and、uh, she won't be able to have children, but she can hopefully adopt children. I'm willing to do all these things, but even if I were to do all of them, there are specific limitations, whether it be biological or, you know, the church principles that say that a trans person, even after SRS, can't go to the temple, which means can't have a temple marriage, can't have kids. It's like, why try? If you're going to fail. She hasn't been coming to church、uh, with us for quite a while. I think it's difficult for her to come there because she does feel like she's judged sometimes from people. She has a strong belief and a strong faith, and, and I just want the obstacle removed that keeps her from being able to you know, live, live the faith that,、uh, that she's always believed in her whole life. And some parts of the religion still filtered through and are a part of, of me. Um, and who I am today, but a lot of that kind of got filtered out, and I should go back and sort of see if, if those are parts that I want to you know, reincorporate in this person that I am now. But at the same time, I'm really busy with transitioning. For the longest time, helped me really separate what are physical things and what are my spiritual components. I don't think that I succumbed to my body, I think I succumbed to my spirit and what it needed. It was just like letting go and letting the picture come into. Focus by itself without me trying to force it to be something that it's not. But when it comes down to it, the only th thing that I can believe in is the relationship between me and God.、Um, and and if, if something happens and I was wrong, then that's okay because at least I made that decision myself. If we were to all die and be resurrected tomorrow, And this young man comes up to me and says, Dad, look, I got resurrected as a man, but I'm okay with that. I don't know that I would be okay with that because I would say, Where's my daughter? And, and who's this young man that, that, that I don't know? I'm hoping that this, this documentary that you're shooting will be watched by some parents. And that maybe something that we've said will help them, and through helping them, will help their children.